Step three. Um, well, before we move on to step three, we will want to take the same steps we did along the seams uh, in the in, um, between steps one and two. As you can see, remember this is uh, this is due to a print failure, this gap. But as you can see, if you come in here, we've got those glue lines again. Um, a little bit of overflow. So what we want to do is again cut it, sand it. Um, with this type, you can't because it is uh, a a full seam um, with glue all the way throughout. You can pick at it with your fingers. Um, However you do it, just you want to make sure to finish that surface. Once you've got the tines on here, getting into this space, it's a little difficult. Get, um, you know, you're, you're, you're having to work around the tines and you don't want to do that. So I recommend doing any sanding or filling of gaps before you move on to step two. Um, so, or step three. Now, step three same verse your now take check your you might want to check your uh, tines uh, due to mild imperfections uh, it, it, it can generally be pretty precise but sometimes you'll get prints that are just a little weird and so check your tines and find the tines that are the best match for each um, for each piece. Um, generally, there shouldn't be too much of a problem, but sometimes it is. If you have any gaps, again, your uh, Allure paint or other option is available. Um, so, here's the weird thing. You can't, uh, before, when I hold, held these together, I would hold them together on a side when I put the body piece together. When I put these pieces on it, I held it. Let's see if you can uh, let me show you. So, um, I held it in this position with this with this uh, support position here. That didn't have, this does not, it didn't, was not being glued at the time. So this, and this weren't actually putting much, didn't have much pressure on them. Um, but if we then add in a tine, all that press, um, all three tines are going to be there. And so there's going to be a lot of pressure on those joints. So we want to uh, find a position to. Uh, to lay this down where the where the force is not gonna be on the glued surface. Um, it's actually pretty simple. You want to hold it like this, and here's what it looks like on the uh, here's what it looks like on the table. Okay, you see, I've got uh, the support here. And the weight of this is actually on this corner here. This is why we wanted this is why we wanted this to dry before we went any further. Um, as you can see, the actual the actual uh, the actual tine would not actually be supporting any of the weight of the body of the gun and so uh, that's gonna help uh, keep these from shifting make sure when you put on a clamp that your clamp comes up from the table so uh, we go about gluing them the same exact way we've gone about gluing everything else um, That is to say, you take your surface. Um, I recommend taking the freer piece for your surface. That way, you're not. Uh, 
That way you have less to handle in one hand while you're putting the glue down. Get your clamp ready. And you attach it. You're not going to be able to see this very well. Um, So you, you put the surfaces together, put some pressure on them, and you get your clamp, and you clamp it down. Again, uh, with these pieces, because there's no alignment uh, pin, you want to kind of make sure that the The piece is firmly aligned side to side here and here. There you go. Repeat with the other three times. So there you go. Uh, properly done. The times will be aligned relatively and will be uh, even. Be careful, it's really some if you got clamps that are a little too big, it might get a little tight. Um, certainly doable. Um, now you need to wait again until this dries. Patience. Now there are some final finishing steps you're gonna want to take. I'll cover them when I get back. All right, so after a couple days of gluing pieces together, we finally have the full thing together. Now, um, as before, one of your first steps is gonna be to get rid of any overflow of the glue. This is gonna be the most difficult uh, a time to do it. Uh, as you've got a bit of an unwieldy, you need to get in here. Um, just do the best you can. I've been working on it for a while. Even out surfaces. Um, and generally get it so that you are ready for, uh, So that you are ready to finish this off now um once you've got all the glue off uh your f the final step um before we go to paint this piece there is one final step and that is we don't wanna um and that's a step we've been again trying to do each step of the way which is make sure all the little gaps that might have erupted from from uh, that might have occurred from uh, my variations in the print, we need to get those filled. Um, if you've been following this video along, you know exactly how I'm gonna do that, and that is the Allure E6000. All you're gonna do is paint these uh, gaps. The uh, way you go about this, uh, for those of you who may have forgotten, you take your gap and you just Run, ooh, ooh, ooh. Got a little bit of over, a little more goo than I wanted there. Um, you just kind of run it over the surface. Now, especially with this, I find it um, really easy to just lightly run a paper towel 
over the surface after doing that. That makes sure the glue is forced in there. Um, now I got it. I ended up with a little bit of a depression between the glue and the uh, surface, so I've run it again. Um, there we go. You don't need too much. Uh, by pressing a paper towel over it, you can force it kind of into the crack. Um, that's going to be a good step. And then you just overload it. And then when we, uh, <clears throat> later on, we can do our standard filing and sanding to get that surface even, uh, to get that surface to be flat. Do this for all your cracks, any remaining cracks that you might have, anything you find. Um, that way, when we move to painting, it's not, uh, the cracks aren't going to be noticeable. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention. When, uh, obviously, uh, I am going to, uh, provide advice for spray painting, uh, this gun. That is the means I am using to paint. Um, if you have access to it, uh, powder coating might also be a really good option. Um, and that's going to require you to have all the cracks filled, not just the bigger cracks. Um, uh, so, you know, how well, how much you fill depends on your painting method. Um, uh, please uh, take a look at the painting videos. Um, if you're unfamiliar with spray painting, I've provided uh, a few tips um, to get your paint, your, uh, to make sure that your paint is even and uh, will hold a, uh, and will hold to your gun so that it will last.